Hey, Sens fans, on today's episode of the Centennial Podcast, we're going to recap a few beauty games by the Ottawa Senators. Uh, we're going to kick it off with a big home win against the St. Louis Blues, uh, and then a couple of, of tight contests against the New York Rangers and the Seattle Kraken. So let's start it off with the absolute stomp. I don't know what you want to call throw down, you know, WrestleMania hockey style that Ottawa put on the St. Louis Blues where it was a devastating 8-1 score and Ottawa just laid into the Blues. They didn't get their first goal until Ottawa was up 7 nothing. Uh so let's touch on that game first. If I didn't give it enough like introduction, please let me know, but uh <laughs> we'll kick it off first to to Matt and what were your thoughts on the big uh throwdown of the St. Louis Blues? I thought it was awesome. I was there. Uh it was great. Um it almost felt like a shutout was not guaranteed, though. It, it felt like Allmark was not going to get a shutout that night. I don't know why, um, but I'm glad his stats got padded in the third period and St. Louis kind of woke up just a little bit to to put some uh, flubber shots on him. But, I mean, man, what a game. Uh, you know, they score on the first shot on goal. Josh Norris has a beautiful tip of a great Giroux pass. Uh, and then the floodgates just kept going. Uh, Stutzla had a four-point night that night. Um, there were three multi-point, uh, multi-goal games, uh, and one was from Adam Gaudet, uh, who is on an absolute heater right now. Um, which I don't know about you fellas, but you love to see it. Um, I thought the defense was excellent. Um, everybody was doing everything perfectly and uh aside from being scored on on the penalty kill uh there's not a lot to complain about um it just they just showed that they can be a dominant team against i don't think the blues are very good so when you torch a bad team that's a good thing like there and then i don't know if you saw the blues they they beat uh toronto um they they're such an interesting team but the sens made them look like chumps so, and i mean if ottawa beat the blues 8-1 and the blues beat the leafs 4-2 that means we would beat the leafs 16 to 4 <laughs> right that's, Something like uh, that. that's math that, baby that's boy math right there that's Sens math, baby. <laughs> Sens math. So all, all in all, I, I there's no complaints from me. I thought that game was, it, it was very nice to not worry. Like after three nothing, I was like, oh, this game's in the bag. We're good. No need to worry. Write a check. Send us home. Call it a night. <laughs> yeah and actually i uh ended up going to the game with my mom and she hasn't been to a sense game in a number of years and she was like oh my gosh i feel bad for the goalie and she was you know <laughs> asking she's like can the goalie be fired and i was like no but that is hilarious that you asked that. <laughs> um and also she asked if the players would all yell at him and get mad and i was like you know what i think if your team's losing this bad you can't really just yell at the goalie uh, and I said, normally the goalie yells at you. <laughs> so anyway, quite quite a game to witness. But uh, Bennett, what were your thoughts on that one? Yeah, I mean, it was a, an important bounce back game, right? The Sens had started off strong on that, uh, you know, Sunshine State road trip. Uh, well, I guess, I don't know if Colorado, you can really consider that a Sunshine State. Uh, whatever you want to call it, that Southwest road trip. Um, and uh you know, they'd started off well with that uh, shutout against uh, Utah. But uh, after that, you know, a Vegas game that should have been in the bag, they let get away from them. And Colorado, you know, they waited too long before they fought back into it. So the Suns really needed a response against St. Louis. And thankfully, the Blues were very obliging and uh, really did not turn up to this game. But, you know, you can only beat the team that's in front of you. And the Suns did. They played well. They looked, uh, the offense looked cohesive and threatening all game and uh you know Walmart didn't have a ton to do but uh you know he didn't 
meltdown. He kept the Sens, uh, you know, he kept things quiet for most of the game. And, you know, one did get past him, but uh, hard to complain about that when you're winning by seven goals, right? Now, they ended up having a couple days off. They go to New York, playing a tough team with, I would say, arguably the best goaltender in the league, looking for a contract extension that is going to get him friggin' paid. And <laughs> yeah, there's honest... nothing more powerful than coming up against a player in a contract year, that's for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure, unless your name is uh, Kubalik. But anyway, uh... <laughs> but uh, all that to say... Um, Shesterkin stood on his head. He was as advertised. The senders did manage to get one by him, but unfortunately not enough. And, uh, the Sens fall two one in a game that they absolutely dominated to be honest. But, uh, you know, Bennett going from a, an eight, one crushing of one team to a close two one loss in the contest against the Rangers. How did you feel about that one? I honestly did. It's one of those losses that, uh, it's really hard to be mad about, right? I mean, the Rangers are absolutely a cup contending team this season. Everybody knows that. Uh, they had a really strong roster last year, the year before that. You know, they're continuing to grow and mature, and you you expect them to be there thereabouts this time in April. Uh, and to take them two to one in a game, like you said, the Sens absolutely dominated. I mean, it was one of just one of those nights, right? I think the Sens off the top of my head, had like 41 shots to New York's 18. And uh, you can't legislate for that, right? But the Sen Senators did everything that they could to win that game. Uh, if it was anybody other than Igor Shesterkin in that, they would have won. I have absolutely no doubt about that. Um, and hey, what can you do? But I really liked the fight and the battle from, from them. I feel like that's a game last year that might have got away from the Senators more. I mean, yes, we still lost, but that's a game where I could see, you know, the Senators putting really good pressure, you know, putting up, you know, like double digit shots in the first period against like a strong team. And then, you know, one or two really rough goals would go in on the other side and it would just take the wind out of the team's sails and it would turn into like a bit of a blowout. And that didn't happen. And I think that's a step in the right direction. Yeah, totally. And and Matt, I was going to flip it to you because you're a goalie guy and you got to watch the Shesterk show. And, you know, how'd you feel about him and, and Olmark going toe to toe? Although maybe Olmark uh, didn't have to do as much toe to toeing. Yeah, I selfishly wanted him to uh, hurt himself only for that game. And uh, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah, that that that's a game that we have not seen in quite some time where the Sens just dominate a, quite frankly, a cup favorite at this point. Well, it is the Rangers. They always choke. So, um, but what Shesterkin did was, was unbelievable. And then the senators just kept pushing, pushing, pushing. And then they, they seemingly hit another gear after they finally scored. And it felt like they were doing everything possible to score. And then, on the power play when Shesterkin made like three goal line saves in a row. I don't know what this man is made of, uh, but he showed it there. Um, it was incredible. It was a great performance by him and you can't fault the Sens. And I was saying to you guys uh, before the, the show kind of started, um, I felt like Olmark's stats in that game do him dirtier than his actual performance. Um, you have a, a Hamannick, um screen that, you know, was a perfect uh, for Artemi Panarin, which was off of a Josh Norris uh, crappy defensive play. And I think he needed to be harder on that. And in the next game I saw him be harder on pucks. Um, but, and then the second goal was a power play goal uh, for the Rangers. And it was just this weird tic-tac play that caught Hamannick, uh again. Um, you can't keep a, getting away with it. I know, right? <laughs> uh, somebody post the meme. Um, <laughs> but 
it it just shows that uh they can go into a game against the Rangers and just not blink. They they did everything possible to win and they didn't. And that's okay. I will accept a meaningful like a meaningful loss. Uh and we're already doing that in uh, November, but <laughs> <laughs> but it led to good things the next game. Yeah, and, and we'll get there. But the one last thing I wanted to touch on for that game is, you know, I don't think there have been many games in the last number of years where most Sens fans collectively sat back and were like, you know what? It's hard to be mad about that one because yeah. that is genuinely a game where Ottawa got goalied. And to be able to play that well against a Rangers team, and yeah, they came up short, but there were so many positives to take away from that game. I haven't ever really had a ton of confidence in Ottawa on back-to-backs, but I was going to that Saturday game against the Kraken knowing full well that Ottawa would win. I I was like, there's no way that they put in the performance they did against the Rangers Friday night and come in back home to a Saturday night crowd and play the Kraken and don't beat them. Uh, that, and that's, you know, what they did. And, and we'll turn to the page to that game. You know, they come home and uh, there was a bit of debate like, oh, Omar wasn't tested. Should he go back in the net? Uh, Ottawa, Travis Green ends up going to Anton Forsberg and he gets number two on the season, leads the league in shutouts. That's Anton Forsberg, like you all expected. So <laughs> uh, throw it over uh, to Bennett, you know. How did you feel when with the Sens coming home and then they get that three nothing shutout win? Well, it's like you said. I mean, in in years gone by, this would be a game that you would expect the Senators to lose. The team is uh, in in recent seasons had a hard time with back to backs, uh, a young team that were very easily mentally boomed, and perhaps the coaching staff that weren't the best at getting them to kind of like chalk it up to a tough day at the office and go again. Right. And I think now we hope that the senators have that. And uh, they showed a lot of, uh, you know, they shot, showed a lot of uh, composure right out of the gate. They were, they really wanted to win this game. You could tell that they were looking to bounce back right away. And I think that's like the encouraging thing about this three game stretch is there are two bounce back games in there against St. Louis and then against Seattle. And, you know, you could say, you know, two wins out of three, is a good thing most of the time but uh having two wins out of three where each of the wins came after a loss i think is again an important step in this team's development and i'm not saying that the team's there yet we're only 11 games in it's a very long season left to go but uh positive signs right and uh hey i mean we touched on on him already but uh adam godet is on a heater right now and you know he's a player who I don't think most of us would expect to see keep this up all season long, but uh, you know, that's what you need from your third and fourth line is guys who can get hot for a couple of weeks and who can, you know, help you win a few games and then fade into the background while the big boys take over. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's how competitive teams roll through an 82 game season. And it's uh, good to see the senators uh, big guns getting some help down the lineup. And you're absolutely on the money with that. Like how many times can we say in the last few seasons that the Ottawa have, that the senators have been getting uh, adequate scoring from their bottom six. I don't think there's many, if any real times, I think the closest they got is when they had that short stint where I think it was uh, Joseph Pinto and um, what's his name? Mott. Mott. Thank you. Tyler Mott. Uh, They were clicking. They were hot start season. And then, you know, as soon as Norris went down and they had to change the lines up, that that line stopped producing. Um, well, because you know Pinto had to move up in the lineup, so it's been a long time where the Sens have had that depth scoring, and I think it takes pressure off the big guys. To be honest with you, you know now it's not like Stutzla, Batherson, and and Norris, Kachuk all having to be relied upon to generate offense. They're getting it from other places in the lineup, and the other thing they're getting is you know, help from their blue line, their blue line are registering points. And, you know, that's a big part of it. If you can't generate offense from your blue line, then it's going to be really tough to get wins. So um, those are some pauses that you can definitely take away, but 
Uh, Matt, I don't want to skip over you. So, you know, what did you think of Anton Forsberg and the Sens coming up uh, huge at it with a home win against the Kraken? I mean, I I posted this on Twitter, but I I really felt like that that was an unlosable game for the Sens. It was written in the stars, guaranteed, uh, right from puck drop that they were going to win, and they came out with a lot of tenacity. Uh, they get. Uh, a goal that I was actually shocked that uh, it stood. Um, but then they had, they showed an alternate angle that showed that Grubauer didn't actually have the puck and thank God for that. And uh, <laughs> there's the, the Godet pun. I didn't even mean to do it. <laughs> um, and Godet scores his, his sixth goal in six games or something to that effect. It's, it's been an impressive run for him. Um I also felt like the team defense for, I would say, two and a half periods was phenomenal. Um, and I really need to give some special shout outs to uh, Shabbat Jensen. It is a treat watching those guys play together. Um, Jensen consistently shows me that this is the player that Shabbat has needed for a long time. And Shabbat still has his like his little guffs and all that. But he is a good defenseman and he is showing it. Um, and it just wasn't the right fit for Chikrin uh, when he was here. And that's okay. You know, things happen. And also the pairing of Clevin and JBD has been very good. Uh, it Like I test and analytically, my God, they are like their, their expected goals against is low. Um, mm-hmm. it's just, it's a, like really good results from them. And they're showing that they can just handle when the puck is in their zone and they can easily just get it out of the zone. And I just felt like every line was kind of clicking. Um, and then finally you had Forsberg who just showed that, you know, his workload for the first two periods, not heavy at all, but he was ready when called upon and he made some beautiful saves, some excellent saves that uh, split save um, on the breakaway was, was phenomenal. And he just, he did what he does. Uh, I'm really happy to see him kind of returning to form pre uh, knee injuries. And uh, it, he's an easy guy to cheer for. And I think having a starter in front of him pushes him to be a better goalie. And if both guys are playing well, that's the best problem that Ottawa could possibly have. Um, I don't know about you guys, but it just, it feels like this team is taking that next step that we've been talking about for like three years now. So Yeah, I think it'll really come down to what results will they get in November. And obviously they're one and one in November so far. I think easily that could be two and oh, but hey, a a win and a loss. They are what they are. So uh, regardless of the effort you put in. So now they got to go the rest of the way. Their schedule uh, in terms of opponents, there's some difficult ones in there. But in terms of scheduling, I think that it's a decent schedule. Uh, they don't have like a, a ton of back-to-backs this month and, and whatnot. It's pretty nicely laid out for them. So I think with the, you know, kind of standard time in between games and whatnot, that'll help. And uh, they just got to stay dialed in, take it one game at a time and have a good November. And I think that that will set the tone going for the rest of the the season. Yeah, it's uh, it's good to see the Sens building a little bit of momentum here. And, uh, you know, we've uh, we've touched briefly a little bit, but uh, on some of the players at the top of the lineup, but uh, Tim Slosos looked really good this year. He's got 16 points in 11 games. He's really cooking. And uh, I know we've mentioned it already before, but I think it really shows how out of sorts he was last year with the wrist and everything. He just looks yeah. so he so much more confident with the puck on his stick. He's willing to take shots. He's willing to, you know, make the plays that you're used to seeing him try and make. Uh and to Chuck as well, seven goals on the year so far, another eight assists for 15 points 
He's one right behind his line mate there. And uh, again, you know, Tuchuk usually finds a way to make points happen, even if you're not entirely sure how. And that is a super important skill to have on the team. I think, that, excuse me, I think that uh, if we can get Perone back in the lineup, if we can get Pinto back in the lineup, uh, this team, and most importantly of all, if we could get Hamnick out of the lineup, I think this team uh, really has the... really has what it takes to push on here. Yeah, and for anybody who's listening on the audio version, uh, stay tuned because coming up next is a little interview we did with Sportsnet's own Kyle Bukowska. So stay tuned for that. And if you're watching this on YouTube, don't worry. The video is going to be up soon enough, so just stay tuned for that one. So thank you for everyone listening or watching to the podcast the, this week. Really appreciate it. Go sends go, and hopefully we have a good November that we can talk about in one of our next handful of episodes. Absolutely. Go sends go. Go sends go.